Goldman Sachs fires 3,000. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee because I'm sure you'll all be quite sad to hear that Goldman Sachs is firing 3,000 people. I mean, it's, it's no fun for the people who lose their jobs. But uh, let's have a look. I mean, that's all, all part of life, isn't it? You've got to take the good with the bad sometimes. But Goldman Sachs readies the biggest layoff since the financial crisis. What does that tell you about the next couple of years? How confident are they? Goldman Sachs Group will start cutting thousands of jobs across the firm from Wednesday. Two sources familiar with the move said as it prepares for a tough economic environment. Just over 3,000 employees will be let go, one of the sources said. But the final number is yet to be determined. That scale of layoffs would be the largest since the 2008 financial crisis, one of the sources said. The source could not be named as the information was not yet disclosed. Goldman Sachs declined to comment. So we don't know. Uh, it's going to happen. You, none of us would be surprised. So Bloomberg reported on Saturday that Goldman would eliminate about 3,200 positions. Goldman had 49,100 employees at the end of the third quarter after adding significant numbers of staff during the coronavirus pandemic. Did they have to scale up? Like so many businesses during the pandemic scaled up. Amazon as a very prominent example, and now they're letting people go. Is this the same thing? I mean, it wouldn't be surprising in such large organizations having to scale back people. The layoffs are likely to affect most of the bank's major divisions, but should center on Goldman Sachs' investment banking arm, one of the sources said. Wall Street banks have suffered a major slowdown in corporate deal-making activity as a result of volatile global financial markets. Hundreds of jobs are also likely to be reduced from Goldman Sachs' consumer business, Marcus, after it scaled back back plans for the loss-making unit, the source said. The bank's chief executive, David Solomon, sent a year-end voice memo to staff warning of a headcount reduction in the first half of January. That would suck, wouldn't it? You know, just before... The end of the year, you're ready to have your Christmas holiday with your family and you get this this voice memo saying, yeah, yeah, we're firing a lot of you. You're you're all gone. This is why the whole bullshit of work is your family. Okay, that's only true if you literally are working with your family. I'm working, I work with my wife and I haven't quite gotten the kids yet with the Lumion skills yet to prepare the renders, but we will, and then we'll pay them to do that. You know, that's work as family, or a family restaurant, or a family business. A big mega corporation, or a big bank, or any of these organizations even, that say that you're family, you're not. You're not. It's all bullshit. And sometimes you need to go through the ringer to realize it, to realize how expendable you are. It's just part of life. It's business. So Goldman Sachs declined to comment on the memo. Okay, so that was leaked. So... The job cuts come ahead of the bank's annual bonus payments, which are usually delivered late in January and expected to fall about 40%. So a 40% cut in bonuses. Are they doing the dodgy thing that Elon did, firing people before they get the bonus? (laughs) Then, you know, they're really in trouble. The bank restarted its annual performance review process and staff cuts in September after pausing for two years during the pandemic. The Wall Street giant typically trims about 1% to 5% of employees each year. These new cuts will come on the top of earlier layoffs. Global banks, including Morgan Stanley and Citigroup, have reduced their workforce in recent months as a deal-making boom on Wall Street fizzles out due to high interest rates, tensions between the U.S. and China, and the war between Russia and Ukraine and soaring inflation. Global investment bank fees nearly halved in 22, with $77 billion earned by the banks down from $132.3 billion one year earlier, deal logic data showed. The total value of mergers and acquisitions globally had slumped 37% to $3.66 trillion by December 20, according to deal logic data, after hitting an all-time high of $5.9 trillion last year. Banks had executed $517 billion worth of equity capital markets, transactions by late December 22, the lowest level since the early 2000s, and a 66% drop from the 21 bonanza. 
Despite the slowdown, Goldman's top dealmakers told Reuters in recent interviews they are bullish on the mergers and acquisition recovery in the second half of 2023. So there we go, guys. Let's uh, have a bit of a talk about this one. So there we have it. 3,000 staff gone from Goldman Sachs following the footsteps of the other banks. And, well, isn't it just a sign that cheap money has disappeared now? Are we returning back to normal? And, well, they not think that the Fed will drop rates for the foreseeable future. Or, I mean, they're such a big bank, they can cut and rehire like nothing. It doesn't really matter. It's just numbers on a spreadsheet. Let me know your thoughts on that one, guys. Certainly something to keep an eye on. But there you go. Remember, these are just places you work. They're not your family. So don't sacrifice your family for these places. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Check out my other channels, Heiser Bim and Heiser Says, or Heiser Does. If you're a fan and want to support the channel, there are a few ways you can. Financially on YouTube or Patreon, using our referral links, buying our pocket squares, or calling us if you need an architect. Take care, everyone. Have a great day. And I'll see you in the next episode of Heiser Says. Bye for now.